Welcome to the Wednesday edition of Anglican Unscripted. This is episodes 172, and you're watching two guys who, well, we've done our taxes, thank God, but who could sit down for 15 minutes and talk about absolutely nothing. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm George Conger. Today is April 15th, 2015. So where have Kevin and George been? Well, that's an interesting story. Um, it works this way. Uh, priests have Holy Week, which is really kind of the, the biggest marathon week in, in priestdom uh, for the clergy. And uh, they usually do between maybe five and uh, on the higher end, 15 different services. And for go-getters like George, um, he was willing to record all through Holy Week and the week after. But when we got together Monday after Holy Work Week, uh, I, I turned on the little Skype and I saw just a little puddle of mush on the other side. And his name was George. And he was <laughs> exhausted. Oh, <laughs> I think you I'm, forgot how hard Holy Week could be. Well, it, was, it wasn't hard, but it was tiring. I mean, mm -hmm. I had, I had, I, each service, I give a different sermon. I don't, you know, so for sat, so on, so uh, there were, Two on Easter Day, two on Holy Saturday, one a day for e Holy Week and Easter Week. So what's that? 14, 15, 17 different sermons. And I've got the deacons at the service as well. I've got three deacons who assist me. And they know if I recycle something, so I have to be original. And I tell you, Kevin, after a while, your brain begins to give out, and you were really tempted to, to do, to, like, I don't know, pull something off the internet that somebody else has said. But, you know, it's sort of, you can sort of tell when uh, John Stott has written a sermon and George Conger's written a sermon. There's a little bit of difference. So, so my, uh, my, intellectual, my intellectual abilities uh, were sorely challenged. Yes. Uh, so I gave George the week off last week. I said, listen, uh, take a couple of days off, relax, do what you need to do, get your brain back together. Uh, and then you had some more car issues. Well, uh, actually, that's how I relax myself. Um, the alternator on the uh, station wagon died, and so I rebuilt that. Yes, I rebuilt it. Isn't that fun? <laughs> and see here, the burn mark. These are not age spots <laughs> on the back of my hands. These are burn marks. And uh, my daughter brought her car down from college for me to do its uh, uh, stuff. So I have been at night. I have been working on the cars and uh, mm -hmm. uh, doing electrical work and. Uh, just lots of fun. So George is uh, a grease monkey, huh? Uh, well, I yes, in many ways, it's one of the. Uh, it's how I relax. Mm -hmm. um, being able to it, there's a deep sense of satisfaction that I find in working with my hands, and uh, being able to uh, accomplish a task. In other words, when you say to yourself, uh, "I'm going to change that ball joint," mm -hmm. you know, you know, you see it, you do it, you've. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm starting to give a sermon, aren't I? Kevin? That's all right. Don't worry about it. No, no, you're fine, really. <laughs> so, well, uh, our for, lesson today is on constancy. Yes. <laughs> so, it's episode 172. Uh, for those of you who don't know, know, the GAFCON primates are meeting over in, in London this week. And uh, this is a news and opinion show where George and I give our opinions, but we want to be careful as well. So George and I were talking in the last week about what GAFCON primates should do during the meeting. I said, well, that's probably a little strong. Why don't we talk about what they could do? And uh, so George and I, the brainstormers are, that we are and the people who should really be in charge of the Anglican Communion, oh, Lord, help us, uh, have decided to give some recommendations to GAFCON. Uh, nothing uh, really out of the ordinary, but uh, one of the biggest things we've seen under Justin Welby's leadership is this, this vacuum of leadership. Um, he visited all the provinces. He, he thought for sure he could bring everybody back together. But when he got back, he said he would leave it up to the primates to call the next primates meeting. He said there would be no scheduled Lambeth um, yet. And uh, so this whole Anglican communion is in some type of quagmire of leaderlessness. And GAFCON said in their last meeting in Nairobi that they wanted to be an instrument of unity so, George, what could they do to, to achieve that? 
Well, right now they're doing some tremendous, fantastic things. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, they're irritating the left. They are giving heart failure to American mm -hmm. liberals, English liberals, Lambeth Palace. If you read some of the liberal blogs and some of the news accounts of what people know so far, the liberals imagine that these primates Imagine the movie Thunderball, where all the members of Spectre are sitting around a table, and they have this image of Peter Akinolis. Now that he's shaved his head, he's perfect James Bond villain. He's stroking a white cat, and each of the seven, each of the seven archbishops in London right now are reporting on the nefarious deeds of the evil Gafcon conspiracy. <laughs> and so long as the liberals believe that stuff, that is fantastic. They're doing a great job. <laughs> The, now, as for, reporters, for you we, and I who have been there and seen actually what they do yeah. at a rather tedious wood paneled uh, <laughs> London airport hotel conference room, yes. you know, with uh, the girl from Ipanema music being played in the background, a little too high so that you can't think, but not low enough so that you can ignore it. What would we want? Hope that they could accomplish? Well, That's different. As journalists, you can tell we don't expect a lot. <laughs> We're pleased with just the liberals being unhappy. Um, it is interesting. They are meeting again in, in London. Um, they kind of uh, <clears throat> border crossing on, on the Mother Church. Um, this is kind of in the shadow of what happened uh, a month or two ago, where Amia had kind of set up their first uh, church and are uh, starting to uh, do things uh, in the, what, what uh, diocese was that in? Diocese, Christ Church Salisbury, mm -hmm. uh, in Diocese of Salisbury in last November, I believe it was, yep. or October, mm -hmm. had a service of thanksgiving where they, in essence, kicked off uh, their worship and life as a formal parish in the Anglican way, in the Anglican communion, in the Anglican tradition, but not in the Church of England, but in England. Uh, shades of the ACNA. That's what we're seeing unfolding slowly but surely in England. Now, we've heard rumors, but nobody will go on the record. One of the rumors is the bishop is going to initiate legal proceedings. And we've contacted everybody, and everybody says, no comment. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's plausible deniability. And as journalists, we love the no comments because that gives us the ability to comment upon them for it. Uh, you know, that's kind of the, the tech issue, is tech is to sue first, forgive later. Um, well, it, incidentally, yeah. who was in Salisbury for Holy Week at the invitation of Nick Holton, the Bishop of Salisbury, preaching at the cathedral? Catherine Jeffords Shorey. Is got, that a coincidence <laughs> or what? Was, I mean, was is there, the Diocese of Salisbury yeah. following the... The, the the great master herself. Uh, yes. Well, it's interesting. This is the first time she's she's visited England many times, but this is the first time she got to officially visit as a bishop or presiding bishop because she, last time she was there, she was not recognized uh, for her office. So uh, it, it was... You, you, what's that? Presiding bishop is princess passive-aggressive. Mm -hmm. you know, when she was invited, I think it was Southwark Cathedral, and she right. couldn't... She and put she, her. <laughs> she held her Episcopal mitre in her hands to show that she was a bishop and everybody should know that she's a bishop. It's just you people won't recognize she's a bishop. Yeah. Oh, the presiding bishop is such a piece of work I, I was waiting for her to burn, burn her bra or burn her mitre, you know, just like a 70s type protest. So uh, a lot is happening uh, behind the scenes and stuff like that. Let's get to what... GAFCON could do. Now, first, l let us preface this. George and I are nobodies, okay? Uh, any suggestions we have are just clearly things that we came up with uh, within our own mind. Uh, we have no influence. I doubt any of the primates even have heard of the show. So we say that in this respect. And I can't uh, get my own children to do anything, so yeah. why should anybody pay attention <laughs> to me? I can't get the kids to take the garbage out. How am I going to get the GAFCON primates to listen? So one of the things we came up with was in this vacuum that Justin Welby has left, uh, I would issue... Uh, a good thing that GAFCON could do would be to uh, call a primates meeting. You mean the primates of GAFCON? No, all the primates. There has not been a primates meeting uh, that is sorely lacking in the church. You want to be an instrument of unity? Now's your chance. Uh, if you can bring seven people into London, you can bring 39 people into London. It's not that big a deal. Uh, if you need money, uh, I'm sure fundraising won't be a big issue. Uh, here in America, people have pockets. 
How, how much, Kevin? I don't know. I'm thinking 25. What? Okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> you remember, Kevin, the last primates meeting was in <clears throat> Dublin. I think mm-hmm. it was 2011. Right. And that was an utter fiasco because the Afri- the GAFCON and the FCA bishops, Archbishop, boycotted that meeting. And they essentially, Rowan Williams essentially got the group to agree that all the previous uh, primates meetings that made these statements and made these recommendations, we're going to ignore all that, and we're just going to do the Andabadu dance until the end of time. Well, that was a total fiasco in terms of political uh, credibility. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that Justin Wobby is saying is, I don't want to call everybody together if half the people aren't going to show. And... I want to be able to sort of have an idea of what the outcome is going to be before I gather everybody in the room. And so Justin Welby's response has been, push it off, push it off, push it off. I don't want to force the issue. Mm -hmm. I think you're right, Kevin. I think there's a critical political mass right now within the primates, not only in GAFCON, for concerted action. Mm -hmm. We saw Kappa, for instance, which includes some opponents of GAFCON. Kappa, the Council of Anglican Provinces of Africa. That includes South Africa, which is an Episcopal Church fellow traveler in the form of its Archbishop Tabo Makoba. Archbishop Makoba endorsed the Kappa statement saying, U.S. Episcopal Church don't this summer at General Convention pass a canons on gay marriage. Don't do it. So now, politically, is the time for the primates, if you wanted to do something with the Episcopal Church, or if you wanted to do something to help get the AMIE or the Church of England on the right track, now is the time for them to act, because you've got the the middle-of-the-road primates and the core GAFCON group all looking, walking, talking in the same direction. So politically, now is the time. And the Global South. It would be something they could do jointly with the Global South. The Global South may not endorse every part of GAFCON, but they certainly believe it's time to get together and set an agenda and have a meeting. And we've got a switch. For instance, uh, Philip Freer, the Archbishop of Australia, Mm -hmm. he is not the Archbishop of Sydney, but he is a good, solid man. He is an honorable, decent Christian man. In other words, I'm not saying his predecessor, Philip Aspinall, Mm -hmm. isn't a good fellow, (laughs) but Freer is not Aspinall. He is somebody that would work with the GAFCON people. Mm -hmm. He may not walk in lockstep with them, but he would listen to them and try to find common ground on many, many issues. Mm -hmm. You've got opportunities like that. Places like Wales, you can write off. I mean, or Brazil, there's places that are totally in the, in the, uh, either in the pocket or in the theological mindset of uh, Catherine Jeffrey Mm Shorey in the hard left. Now, if you got that's th- not going to change, so you got to move now, right? But if you got twenty five or thirty primates coming, uh, which is a, a size of a lot, uh, at some point the uh, uh, Episcopal Church would ha- have no choice but to show up as well, uh, including Canada. So there could be this grand swell of activity where you want to at least be there with a voice. Uh, is it going to be easy to do? No, and it's not supposed to be easy. Uh, but it's something that is afforded GAFCON at this moment in time because of the lack of leadership from Canterbury and we're other gonna, instruments of unity. We're going to have a new presiding bishop for the Episcopal Church this summer mm-hmm. uh, in uh, June uh, 27th, mm-hmm. I think. And so there's not going to be a GAF, there's not going to be a primates meeting before then. But if you have a new primates meeting and you can bring in the new American presiding bishop and he or she is not Catherine Jeffrey Shorey. It's a new clean slate. And you'll able to basically do so much more constructive work with a new person. Mm-hmm. One of the things that Lambeth Palace told us years ago is that until Bob Duncan and Catherine Jeffrey Shorey were off the scene, there was not going to be any resolution of the American problem in their mind. Mm-hmm. Well, Bob is gone, replaced by someone who is a cut from the same mold as Bob Duncan, but is a different personality type. Sure. They're not going to elect a conservative at the Episcopal Church's General Convention, but they may elect somebody who's not a lunatic. Uh, oh, I don't know. That, I don't think that's... The, the, from what I see in the pool, all but maybe two are lunatics, but there are lunatics. Um, so this is one of the things that we would say that GAFCON could do. We're not in offering a should. Um, uh, that's not our place, but uh, it's something afforded this opportunity. Now, George, it's... April 15th. Have you done your taxes? 
Yes, and in fact, Kevin, here is the certified mail receipt going to the IRS uh -huh. in Austin, Texas. Uh -huh. So now I can breathe. Again. Well, I just I finished. Breathe. I just submitted Victoria's taxes, and I, I found a piece of uh, paper we, we should, we're supposed to include in there, the 1099Q we missed. So I have to file an amended tax return for uh, Victoria. Uh, every year, I, you know, as I operate a ministry, a business, uh, and uh, my wife and I are fully employed, we spend at least 20 hours a year doing taxes, and this happens. This is at the bottom of some pile on the dining room table. Uh, and Kevin, yeah. I, I, I've got a solution to your problem. Have those people who wish to give tax-free gifts to your children, <laughs> yes. give them to my children, ah. and I will gladly take care of the tax paperwork burden. I, I think that. that's a fair trade, don't you? I do. And wow, George, what a what a guy! Well, that's I, I, the. I'm a great guy. <laughs> we've we've wasted 15 minutes of your time. <laughs> we appreciate you watching. This has been. Well, I'll let George do that. I'm Kevin Carlson. And I'm George Conger, and you've been watching episode 172 of Anglican On Screen. find the uh, curtain no no i i found uh i found the girl's first grade report cards and things <laughs> that, like that's that. good that'll really help <laughs> well you know when one of them's present in the united states that's they'll, right they'll be of immense value and i can auction them on ebay and uh, the fbi i i would want to see them first so yeah definitely <clears throat> three two one welcome to the wednesday edition of anglican unscripted the tax edition this is episode 172, and you're watching two guys who can sit down and talk for 15 minutes and actually say nothing. I'm Kevin Carlson. And I'm George Conger. And I have that special gift being an Episcopal priest to say nothing for even longer. This is episode 170. This is April 15th or episode 172. I forget. Which one did I do I say? <laughs> 172. 172. All right. Well, we're trying.